Hello and welcome to another episode of Levy's Customs. Today's installment is going to be a little bit different from my uh, gaming focused content. Today we're going to be looking at the Microsoft Surface Go and its successor, the Surface Go 2. Now the Surface Go is a small Windows based tablet that's supposed to compete with the iPad and iPad Air. The one thing about this tablet is that it runs a full version of Windows. The original Go came out in 2018 and the Go 2 came out in 2020. I will be reviewing these in regular Windows mode. Uh, the consumer versions come in Windows S mode. If you want to know more about that, Google is your best friend. The Surface Go and Surface Go 2 have some similarities like the same magnesium chassis, same front and rear cameras, and they share the same speakers as well. There are a few differences between the two models and they're mostly internal, so let's go ahead and look at the specs. Now, there are several variations of each model, um, but I'm only gonna be going over the ones that I have. For the original Go, the processor is an Intel Pentium Gold 4415Y, a six watt, two core, four thread processor that has a base frequency of 1.6 gigahertz. It has Intel integrated HD 615 graphics, eight gigabytes of DDR3 1866 megahertz memory in dual channel, a 128 gigabyte NVMe SSD, 10 inch IPS touch display with an 1800 by 1200 resolution, a three by two ratio with a pixel per inch density of 217. It has AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.1, a five megapixel front facing camera, a eight megapixel rear facing camera, two two watt speakers, and a single microphone located next to the front facing camera. The Surface Go 2 has an Intel Core M3-8100Y, which is also a two-core, four-thread CPU. It has a base clock of 1.1 GHz and a boost clock of 3.4 GHz. Its base TDP is 5 watts, but has the ability to go up to an 8-watt TDP, which the Go 2 seemed to be able to stay at. The 8-watt base clock is 1.6 GHz. It has the same Intel 615 graphics, uh, but it is clocked 50 megahertz higher than the original. It has the same eight gigabytes of DDR3 1866 memory. This model has a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD. It has a 10.5 inch IPS touch display with a 1920 by 1280 resolution, the same three to two uh, resolution ratio, but it has a slightly higher 220 pixels per inch. It also has Wi-Fi AX, Bluetooth 5.0, the same five megapixel front facing camera and eight megapixel face rear facing camera and two watt speakers, but it now has dual studio mics next to the cameras. This variant also comes with a micro SIM tray and has the ability to use an eSIM. This means you can have 4G LTE data come straight to your Go. For the benchmarks, I only did a Cinebench R20 and Blender just to test the CPU, uh, so no games this time, but I will say that they can do some light gaming like League of Legends or Civ 5. So let's take a look at the Cinebench results for both of these. The original Surface Go got an average of 260 points for multi-core and 132 points for single core performance. The Go 2 got an average multi-core score of 376 points and a single core score of 277 points. Looking at these numbers, we can see that the Surface Go 2 with the M3-8100Y has 45% better multi-core performance and a whopping 110% better single core performance. That's crazy. In fact, the Surface Go 2's single core score is higher than the multi-core score of the original Surface Go. What? How does the Surface Go 2 do that? Well, the M3-8100Y that's in the second generation Go 
can boost up to 3.4 gigahertz on a single core as long as temperatures stay in check. Whereas the original GOES processor, the 4415Y, doesn't boost at all, so it's, it stays at 1.6 and can't go any higher. This gives a pretty huge advantage to the Surface GO 2 in terms of lightly threaded workloads. Now let's look at Blender's Classroom benchmark. The first gen GO finished in 2 hours, 43 minutes, and 33 seconds, whereas the GO 2 completed in 1 hour, 18 minutes, and 49 seconds, well over twice as fast. Again, showing how much faster the GO 2 is. As far as battery life is concerned, uh, these things have pretty poor battery life for what they are. You know, when you think of an iPad or something, those things last at least 10 hours. And Microsoft claims that the Go lasts nine hours and the Go 2 lasts five hours. In my own personal experience uh, of, you know, my usual usage being uh, light photo editing, uh, doing some uh, media streaming like music or video, uh, usually around 50 to 80 percent uh, screen brightness. The Go lasts about four hours and the Go 2 lasts about five hours, which a lot of laptops last longer than that. I also ran RimWorld at 100% screen brightness and just let it run until the battery hit 5%. Both of them lasted about two hours, so probably worst case scenario is gonna be about two hours for these things. Both the first and second generation GOES have over 100% sRGB gamut coverage, which is really good for you know, viewing content or creating content. Now, the Surface Go does not come with a keyboard. It just comes as the tablet. Um, and you may think that's a little weird. You know, laptops and stuff usually come with a keyboard. Well, you have to keep in mind this is supposed to be competing against the iPad, which it itself does not come with a keyboard. You have to buy it separately. There are other accessories besides the keyboard, like there's a pin and stuff. I won't cover those in this video, but I will in another. Unfortunately, the audio that you hear on this video doesn't quite do these speakers justice. Uh, despite them only being two watt speakers, they are some of the best speakers I've heard on a portable device like this. Uh, it's very crisp, very clear, it gets very, very loud, like it'll easily fill a room and not get muddy. Uh, there is no bass to speak of, but you know, speakers of this size, you just can't expect that. Both of these devices share the exact same uh, front-facing and rear-facing cameras. Uh, Microsoft does say that the Go 2 has, uh, the front-facing camera does better in low light, but we'll see if that's true. So here it is, uh, fairly good lighting. Uh, and this is on the original Surface Go uh, with the one uh, microphone. Uh, kind of in a, a loud environment. There's a kid watching something on a tablet over there, TV's on in the back over there. Um, so this is just kind of how it, it, it looks, uh, almost in the best case scenario. Um, you know, unless you have professional studio lighting and stuff like that, it might look a little bit better, but this is, this is about as good as it's gonna get. And it's about as good as it's gonna sound. This would be in uh, what I would consider very low lighting. Uh, as you can tell, it's very grainy. Um, the colors start getting a little weird, um, I'm guessing because the camera is having a hard time uh, detecting what the color balance should be. You can see it changes, it gets warm, and it gets cool, so, uh, and right in there it's a little, little green, a little too green, so this is kind of what it sounds like, uh, or looks like in um, 
very low lighting on the Surface Go. So here is the Surface Go 2 um, with its uh, dual microphones to help and everything, but it's the image quality is pretty nice, you know, like it's, this is way better than a regular laptop. This is close to like a modern cell phone. Whoa, just come on, let me, <laughs> there's gotta be a way to change the white balance and stuff. That's what it looks like. It, it tried to change the white balance. Anyways, for a, a you know, like a webcam, I, it's a little bit better. It's more the, like the quality of a selfie cam, which is like you know, kind of what this is intended for. So I think that's I think that's pretty nice. Um, everything seems a lot sharper than most other laptops. So it's pretty cool. All right, here is the Surface Go Two uh, low lighting test. Um, it's very it's very dark in here. Um, I don't know if it's doing any necessarily any better. It's still changing white balance. Uh, it gets cooler when you're more in the shadow. And then once we aim it towards a window, it gets warmer. Uh, I'm not seeing too much of, a, of an improvement over the first one. Maybe a little bit, I'll have to compare the videos. Um, but, uh, not as good as I was hoping it was going to be. The front facing camera has really bad focus hunting, which is bad if you want to do any type of video work. Here's some pictures that I took with both of these devices. They're not bad, but they're not good either. All right, now I'd like to talk about the ports on these. We have the keyboard connector on the bottom, a USB-C port, 3.5 millimeter TRRS compatible audio jack, and a Surface Connect port on the right side. And if it is an LTE model, a nano SIM card tray on the left, and under the stand, a micro SD card slot. You may be thinking a single USB-C port for connectivity on this, and yes, but you do have to understand, again, it is competing against the iPad, which also only has one data port. But this is not an ordinary USB-C port. It does support five gigabits data transmission, but it can also do two 4K monitors up to 30 Hertz. You can also charge both Surface Go's uh, via power delivery using that USB-C port, which for me is super convenient. I like using that way of charging a lot. The stand on the Surface Go is very nice and it can fold almost 180 degrees. This gives you flexibility on the angle of the screen. The hinge also supports a decent amount of force, making it comfortable to use the pin or on-screen keyboard. The Surface Go also has Windows Hello facial recognition, which allows you to log into the computer just by looking at it. I originally bought the original Surface Go uh, to do photo editing, uh, you know, on the go and stuff, just because the screen was so good and it was very small, so it's not like I'm lugging around a huge laptop, but the processor just wasn't able to, it, I could <laughs> edit my, pictures and stuff, but it was just very slow and especially exporting the final results, it sometimes would take like 30 minutes to an hour. The reason I got the original Surface in the first place was to edit my pictures on the go. I use Lightroom Classic um, and I saw that the screen on this thing was just really good, you know, over 100% sRGB coverage, which is great for editing content. So. I got one and just the processor, while I could do editing, and I did edit quite a few photos on this thing, it was just very slow and it became frustrating to work on anything at all. But I started thinking of ways that I could use it uh, because 
as we'll find out later, these aren't cheap things to buy. I used it for script editing for this channel. I did light office work. I uh, started to use it more for uh, content viewing, you know, streaming services and stuff. Um, and I even started to do a little bit of gaming on it because uh, it can play like Stardew Valley very well, RimWorld. Uh, a lot of the more indie games, you know, you're, you're not going to be playing anything crazy on it. It is definitely not any type of gaming computer. Now the second generation Go, uh, which I upgraded to a few months ago, it actually is pretty okay to edit my photos on. It's definitely not as fast as my desktop or anything, but for on the go, it works very well. Something else to consider is cost. Now, both of the one, these versions that I have are the uh, business slash education uh, or commercial and education versions. Uh, so they come with Windows uh, 10 Pro and not Home. Uh, and so the price is higher than the retail ones. Uh, but for like my original Go, I did a combo where I, I got the Go and the type cover for a little over $700. <laughs> you know, and at, at over $700, you can get start, you're getting into like budget gaming laptop territory right there. And then with the Go 2, uh, I bought like the highest tier you can get and just the go itself was I think it was a little over $800 which is uh, is hard to swallow for me it's the little things that make this device worth the cost the build quality is outstanding the webcam is spectacular the speakers are amazing being able to charge via USB-C is a nice bonus the ability to add a micro SD card for storage expansion a crisp, beautiful display, and even the fact that my Bluetooth headphones have no latency when used with the Go make it worth the price. It's a great little daily driver that I can take anywhere, but I think because of the relatively high cost, mediocre battery life, and the fact that other PCs in this price range are a lot quicker, the user base is gonna be a lot more niche. What do you guys think of the Surface Go? Do you think it's worth the price? Is there something that you'd like me to test in future videos? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you are interested in some tips and things that I do to help make the most out of my Surface Go, uh, go ahead and subscribe as I'll be doing some more videos on those subjects. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.